everyone and welcome to Callie's Collectibles Review. As always, I am Callie and today it's a little bit something a little bit different. I'm gonna be taking a look at my original run of uh, Alien vs Predator comics from I think 1990, could be 92. I can't quite remember the year off the top of my head, but once I start gonna get them in the review station, have a proper look at them, the dates will be there somewhere. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, here we go with uh, my review of these comic books. So I'm going to jump over to the review station and uh, check it out. Right, so here we are and here's the books. Um, I'll just take this one off camera, but this is issue zero in the series. Um, I think this one came out after the original run. It's kind of like a... And it sort of just expands upon the intro you see at the beginning of the issue one. So it adds a bit more to the story, but not an awful lot. It's more kind of from the uh, Predator's point of view. But we'll take a look at that in just a sec. Just need to get it out of, the, uh, out of its sleeve. All right. So I'll uh, try and get a good angle. Take a look at the pages. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah, July 1990 this came out. But there you go, some, uh, some of the artwork. Let's see if I bring the camera down a little bit. We can get a better angle at this. There we go. Bit, bit closer for you there. Move the camera back a bit. So there you go. Really need something to prop these up on, don't I? <laughs> there you go, look. And like I said, you see a lot of this kind of artwork in the actual uh, issue one. Uh, but this is what I'm doing in black and white, which is quite interesting. I mean, look at that. The, well, let me uh, bring my camera up back up a bit. There we go. There we go. Queen Alien, look. Just amazing artwork, in my opinion. But, I mean, um, if you don't know this series, I'll talk about it as I'm kind of flicking through the books. Showing you a bit of the artwork. Um, basically, the general gist is, at some point in the future, the Predators are looking to seed a planet with alien eggs uh, for a kind of traditional ritualistic hunt that they go on. Kind of a rite, rite of passage kind of thing for young Predators. Uh, they pick a planet called Ryushi that they don't realise has actually got human colonists on it who are kind of raising um, cattle. Um, I can't remember what they call them. Rinth, I think they call them. And, yeah, because of that, and because of some mishap with the alien queen, who manages to sneak a royal face hugger onto the dropship that's going to drop the eggs onto the planet, they end up with a queen on the planet. And that means that, you know, the rinth and humans get infected, and, oh, it's... It, it's a much better interpretation of the story than the, uh, oh god, when was it, 2004 film? The, the Paul W.S. Anderson one. That film, yeah, that the, the set-up and premise for that was a little bit far-fetched. This one, okay, far-fetched, you know, alien species <laughs> seeding a planet with another alien species. You know, it's kind of far-fetched anyway, but it makes it seem a little bit more believable. You know, it's something the Predators would do, you know. There you go. And that's basically the general setup. It's more... This is more about the Predators and the history of the main Predator. Hard Boiled by Frank Miller. Don't know if anybody read that. If anybody read, please um, comment. I'd like to hear more about that. I never got to read it back in the day. I've still never read it. 
um, Predator merchandise. I wonder, if I sent that away, would I actually get anything? <laughs> and again, lovely piece of artwork by Mike Magnola. So there you go. That's issue zero, as I said. I'll get through these as quick as I can. But yeah, um, so the, what the story points I talked about just now, uh, they're kind of like the setup. Uh, there's lots of kind of different characters that pop up throughout the story. The main kind of big breakout character for this series was um, a human by the name of Michiko Noguchi. Phil Norwood, if anyone knows that name, please let me know. Because, again, brilliant piece of artwork. And see, there's, again, in this issue, you get a lot of kind of the same artwork as you're flicking through. Especially when you start seeing the Predators, it's like, okay, that's, that's from issue zero. But there she is, Miss Naguchi. As we're saying, becomes a, a human predator, essentially. Uh, she joins their clan after the events of this story arc. Uh, she did go on to star, uh, be kind of a main focus in other stories within Dark Horse's Predator universe because not all of their uh, Predator and Alien stories are interconnected, but a lot of them are. So, or they kind of do like they do one story run, then do another story, and then they do like a sequel to that that original story, which they kind of did with uh, Michiko's story. There you go. Some brilliant artwork, lovely colours used in this. There you go. Like I said, because there's, I've got like five issues to get through, I'm kind of just scanning through this, kind of giving you a few uh, story highlights. Oh yeah, this is how the Predators become involved with the humans. A guy accidentally crashes his ship, and uh, well... Yeah, it doesn't go well. Hold on, my camera is tilted ever so slightly for some bizarre reason. Straighten up, camera. You've got a job to do. you got one job, camera. One job. <laughs> yep, see, look, there it goes. He crashes a, a vehicle of some sort into the Predator ship. Predator ship goes kaboom. Predators see that as an act of war, so they start fighting the humans, and then the aliens show up. Um, wackiness ensues, and Machiko teams up with a predator. See, look, there's the queen. Look, there's the nest. I love this issue. Unfortunately, they don't do this in the um, collected edition that you can buy. Um, it's actually got a map of the um, colonists. Well, where they where they attack it, where their colony basically. It's got a whole map of it, and it's got a little key down the side. So when they're in the story talking about where such and such places, you can actually kind of visualize the distances they've had to travel. I don't know many comic books that kind of do that. They kind of give you the layout of where an attack is happening. So when they reference something, you can kind of go, oh, wow, they, they, oh, that's a hell of a fight, you know. So I love that little, just that little touch. Uh, Alien Earth War, one of the uh, longer and better comic uh, adaptations of Aliens. And Exquisite Corpse. Never heard of that one myself. There you go. That's issue one. Uh, issue two. <laughs> like I said, I'm getting through this as quick as I can. I might actually uh, just kind of flick through pages rapidly. Just to get it done. There you go. So you kind of get the general gist. I'm trying to get it, most of the, the most of it in frame. 
But there you go, look. You can see the general gist of what's going on. I mean, I when when this first this story first came out when I was a kid. I mean, 1990, I would have been, what, uh, seven? Going on eight? And I remember, like, going into one of the local comic book shops, kind of stumbling across just a random lot of Aliens and Predator comics, and I found this, and it was just like, holy shit. This needs to happen, because I'd, I'd not long watched, I mean, <laughs> shouldn't have been watching those films at that age, but I'd not long watched Predator 2, and the little tease in Predator 2 where they've got the skull, up in the Predator ship, I was just like, oh, Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator, oh, that has to happen. And then, like, the com I seen the comic book and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's becoming real, it's becoming real. But then I had to wait until, like, 2004, 2000, whatever, to, like, actually see it on screen. And as entertaining as the film could be, it was still not what I wanted. It was just like, oh man, there's three Predators and two of them got killed in like 10 seconds flat. <laughs> you know, it's just, holy shit. See, look, there you go. Predator coming to her rescue. Oh, very cool looking Hulk statue there. Frank Miller, Dave Gibbons. Give me liberty, an American dream. The Terminator, he's back. Do -dum 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 -dum. Do -dum 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 -dum. <laughs> I have actually, speaking of Terminator, I recently played the um, Terminator Resistance video game. Um, it's okay. It's not brilliant. I wouldn't say it's going to beat the likes of Call of Duty or, you know, that kind of thing. But if you're a fan of the Terminator films, there's definitely something in there for you to enjoy. Right, but back to Predator. Yeah, my, but my love of Predator has, oh, from the first time I saw the film... You know, because we kind of had this rule in my house with my parents was that if my dad watched it and thought I could handle it, we'd watch it together. If my dad watched it and didn't think I could handle it, something like, okay, perfect example, Aliens. Yeah, I know I saw the second one before the first one because my dad didn't think I could take the, the chest burster scene. But, you know, <laughs> but he watched something like The Fly and he was like, there's no way in hell you watching that. So I was like, okay, okay, I have to wait for that one. But, you know, I'd watch things like Aliens and Predator and things like that. And, you know, as soon as I saw the first one, I just, I just absolutely fell in love with the creature itself, the design, the look, the way it moved, the, the, the kind of the unanswered questions it left. It's like, you know, it was just, oh, it was just, my thirst for knowledge was just hit. And I needed to find out more, so I tracked down comic books and, you know, films, video games, action figures, the old Kenner action figures from the 1990s. But, you know, so, but this story, it's, it's very nuanced, it's very, uh, like, all the stuff with Machiko and the Predator, like, them teaming up, because they don't understand each other's language and the Predator can only really speak in kind of vocal mimicry it's like how do they work together but you see that it just comes so naturally to her and she has this like disconnect from humanity from the very start of the story she has the like complete and total disconnect from everyone apart from one guy she's friends with one person and then she ends up teaming up with this predator and she realizes that she's got more in common with them than she does with humans and that's kind of why she decides in the end to to go with them. She waits for some of his people to show up and say, you know, this is what happened. He marked me. I'm one of your clan. you got to take me with you. And that's pretty much what happens. You know, no spoiler alerts or anything if you've not read it. But, you know, it's a, what, 30-year-old comic book? If you've not read it by now, <laughs> well, what have you been doing with your life? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, we all have different tastes. There's another issue with Give Me Liberty there. And um, whatever that is. 
Palladium books offer a megaverse of adventure. And Dead Face. Okay. Right, wow. On to the last issue. We're at 14 minutes already. I'll have to make my uh, closing video a quick one. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Final issue. Just say the cover art on this one is one of my favourites. You know, it looks very uh, 80s movie poster for an action film. There we go. <laughs> But here we go, on to the last issue. Yeah, they've got the Rinth stampeding, climbing a tower with aliens attacking, the tower snaps. I mean, the artwork is just brilliant on this. I know I keep saying it, but it's one of my favourite aspects of comics. Is Some of them, the storyline's brilliant, but the artwork's not so great. And then you get ones that vice versa. The artwork is amazing, but there's just no little to no kind of connective story. But then you get ones like this where it's just, to me, a nice blend, blend, uh, blend of the two. Well, there we go. Look, that's a lovely picture. You know, a predator rescuing a human. A very rare sight. You know, that's, that's amazing. That shows that they do have more than just, oh, we're going to come and kill humans on their mind. You know, they do see us as sport, but sometimes when we're caught in the crossfire of their war, they'll side with us. That's that's to me to me that's amazing. Here we go. Oh yeah, he's got a chest burster. See the one thing I don't like there is the chest burster comes out already like black with the silver teeth, whereas you know Alien Cannon has shown us that these tend to be pink. So it's not a bad thing, it's just one little error in an otherwise brilliant book. <laughs> there you go fighting their way to the uh the ship because they get there's a ship in a cargo ship in orbit waiting for the cargo and they decide to crash it into the planet to destroy all the aliens there's the big mama bitch herself you know that famous line from aliens get away from her you bitch <laughs> there you go fucking the queen up go on <laughs> But yeah, unfortunately, the, the Predator in this. I've actually got an action figure of this guy. I will do a review of him and the Machiko figure I've got at some point. Uh, just so you can all see more of the character. He's one of my favourites. His name is Deshande. So, you know. <laughs> yep, see, she decapitates the Queen. The colony gets destroyed. The Predator, as he's dying... He's like, you know what? You you done good, bitch. You you fucked that queen up. So I'm gonna mark you. And I'm gonna die. And you're gonna cry. And then you're gonna wait. Look at that man, she's got his wrist blade as a knife. And the alien queen head strapped to the roof of her little shed thing. That to me is epic. There you go, some more adverts. Oh, Giga stuff, look, if you're into Giga. <laughs> God. That came out years ago. And there we go, there's some uh, stuff there. But that's it for my look at the Alien vs. Predator original comic book series from 1990. Um, I'm going to jump back out of the review station now to give you my uh, closing and uh, say goodbye. So I'll speak to you in a minute. Okay then, so that was my look at the original AVP comic book series from um, Dark Horse Comics. Um, if you've not given it a read before, I highly recommend tracking it down. Um, best way to find it is Alien vs. Predator Omnibus Volume 1. It's got this story and the uh, sequel story to it. 
Um, I've got those as novelizations as well. So yeah, I, I love this story so much I've graded three fucking times. So um, yeah, if you liked what I, you saw today, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Um, hit the bell to stay notified for when I do uploads. I do uploads every Tuesday and Thursday. So I look forward to seeing you again on in, in my next video. Sorry. And uh, until then, bye-bye.